Well, hi everyone. What we have in store today is me talking about how to think in React because, well, I, I talked with a couple of you just during these past days and you know, past weeks and a and couple of you said that, hmm, yeah, well, I'm starting to look into this React thing and it seems to kind of work, but it also seems a little bit weird since I'm used to Java and Flow and so on. So, so I was thinking that maybe I could share a little bit of kind of perspectives and, and kind, kind of how to think about things when you're using React, because I mean, it, it's not just the language that is different. It's also a whole, whole different way of thinking about how you actually define your, your views and, and how you react to events and so on. So what we have is a really, really simple application. Uh, it's almost straight from from start of what no not start but in the combo from from the uh, Hilla quick start tutorial. Uh, I just made a small tweaks to make this easier to show. But what we see is really that when we are using React, our component, our view here, it, it's just a function that returns something that looks like the HTML that actually makes up this view. In fact, it's good to know it's not HTML. They're just tricking you. Uh, behind this, uh, what happens is that it kind of com uh, compiles your code into something that actually does something along these lines. So it 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 uh, it creates some element using React dot create element and uh, let's click for instance. So in this way, why isn't this working? No, it works. Uh, in this way, kind of, this is actually what happens. So this is the element we should be showing. This is the content of it, children. So this could be another React of create element call. And here we have kind of uh, properties for it as an object. So I can, for instance, here give it a call back like console log, log click or something like that. And now when I click the button, we, we see that it's clicked. And of course, this isn't limited to just HTML tags. We can also give it, for instance, here we give it a, a, a React uh, avoiding button. So then when we use that, it kind of works the same, but but now it's actually a, a different component. But anyways, this is kind of, this is the way it works behind the scenes, but it's it's quite in, inconvenient. So we, we definitely prepare to do things in this way instead, because it's it's, it does exactly the same thing. So this is a much more convenient way of, of defining the same uh, objects. But behind the scenes, actually, this is run through a, a kind of compiler that rewrites this into actual JavaScript that runs that kind of code. What you can do here, for instance, of course, is also to build more complex structures, like wrapping a div around this, this button. Let's style this div a little bit. So uh, let's give it a style. Back ground uh, pink pink and yeah well we got a pink background there one thing to notice here is that anything when you want to escape out of jsx mode which is kind of where you can write html uh, tags uh, then you use uh, curly braces and then in this case the style object or the styles that you put there is also a javascript object so that's why you get these kinds of double curly braces here which a little bit worried, but maybe, but that's the way it works. Uh, next thing to look out for is, I mean, I just now happen to do all of this on one line of code. Uh, you might want to break it up a little bit. So maybe something like this. And now when we say we see that nothing works because uh, this syntax is a little bit picky with new lines and so on. So it's, it's usually a good idea to just wrap this thing in parenthesis because then the compiler is happy and, and we actually get to split our stuff up on, on multiple lines. Actually, let's remove those stuff because they're quite ugly. Uh, next thing, um, you might also, uh, here on the top level, sometimes you want to, to show multiple things and that again gives us is an error because this thing needs to return a single element. But what React has is a cheat you can say that, no, no, this is just a single element. So by wrapping in this kind of, it's kind of an HTML tag, except that it's empty. It doesn't even have a tag name. These are called fragments. 
and by by doing that you can actually return something that that kind of has multiple elements so if i now i lost my mouse there it is so if i now select this div we actually see that kind of we got our div we got our hello text and on the same level as other things in this view so this this uh, heading for instance that goes into the nav bar they end up side by side so we're actually returning multiple siblings here and and that's that's kind of just how how react works so so you don't have to return just a single element if you don't want to but let's continue uh, the main thing you want to do in all your react components is of course to have some kind of state something that can change also and the way you do this is uh, in this quite weird syntax uh, so there's there's a lot going on here i will just make it work and then i will uh, describe what happens so when we click we're going to do set count count plus one and then we also want to show how many clicks we have registered here so let's see that this works yes so what do we got got here we got this use state let's talk about that in a while First, let's talk about this thing, because this looks weird. Actually, I talked with one of you over lunch, and, and the conclusion was that this particular part, he wasn't sure, is it pure genius or pure evil? But, but it's one of them. Because what this is really is, if you see at use state here, it returns an array where the first item is always a number, and the second item is, well, it is what it is. So this is actually equivalent to kind of getting this as state and then we say that the count is the first item from the array and set count is the second item from the array and now TypeScript is kind of happy well we got a number here and we got this this kind of callback here but again this is kind of inconvenient so therefore the convention with with use state is to use this kind of TypeScript syntax or JavaScript syntax that lets us create two separate constants out of the array items that we get from this thing. What we actually get there is, like we see, we get the actual count value. What is the number right now? And then we get this set count method. I mean, we can name these whatever, but this is this is the convention. Uh, so whenever this is called, actually, let's uh, or render so now we can see that uh, every time i click the button it it logs one more render let's actually also add the count there just for good measure yep uh, so whenever this is called then it updates the state value somehow and then it it renders the function again and then when that when it's rendered again, this function is called, which means that uh, use state returns a new value of the count, and then it just returns the same update function. So how does this use state work? Well, that's that's very interesting because this is dark magic. Uh, kind of translating this to Java concepts, this uses a thread local kind of it sets, which is the current component that we're rendering kind of an instance for that because again this is just a function but behind the scenes there's an instance and associated with that there's then the actual value of this state and callbacks to to re-render this function and so on uh, we can see some really weird thing if we for a moment change this to a var and then we nope, uh, then we create another one which is count two and set count two and then we also duplicate these buttons so we got uh we got something like this so now we got two different independent buttons using their own state uh, and then we do something really ugly so oh yeah the seeing in the comment there yes this is the initial value that is that is there before uh before it has been updated by by any click handlers and so on uh, but what we got here if um, uh, let's do something really really ugly as, as said so we will just on random well not, not like that but like that we'll do it like this so this is one case and the other case is else we do the opposite so every now and then 
uh, the first time we call you state that's used for the count uh, the, the state that is used by the first button but on random sometimes it instead gets here and then the first use state call is actually used by the second button so this will create some really confusing effects if i now click well it updated the other button if i click again it updated this button click again random i mean kind of it keeps toggling because what actually happens is that the react kind of keeps track of in which order these use this and that functions have been called and uses that to keep track of which is which. So you don't kind of assign any name that React is aware of, but it's instead just based on the order of, of how you call these. Another thing that you can also do, which is very interesting, is like this, because now when I click here, we actually get an error because uh, now it complains that rendered more hooks than during the previous render, because now sometimes we call you state one two times and sometimes one two three times and then react kind of knows that now we're doing something we shouldn't do so you should always kind of you shouldn't use use state or other react hooks which is other use this and that methods or functions you shouldn't uh use those inside ifs or loops or anything like that because then react will kind of lose track of which which thing corresponds to what thing from, from previous in invocations of the same method. Final thing with updating state is if we got a more complex state. So uh, what if we got a bunch of items? Let's create some really simple items like just an array containing one, two, and three. Uh, no, zero, one, two, I mean, uh, like so. And then let's also show these here. So just JSON stringify those items so we see them and then we got yeah we got zero one two there and then we create a button uh, where we want to add one more item so kind of you would or maybe you wouldn't but the most obvious way of doing things would be uh, let's like items dot length like so and then now if I click the button, nothing happens. We actually see that as I click, we're not rendering again, because like I said, we need to run a state setter for anything to render. But these have actually been processed. So when I click this other button, then it renders again, and then it actually updates what's shown here also. So we need something more complicated here. Uh, like I said, no, I lost the parenthesis or something, didn't I? No, what's wrong? Help. You're missing yes, one parenthesis, I guess. I guess so, I just don't. So, another one after that? Like so? Oh yeah, yeah. of course, it's in the end of the lambda and the end of the, the uh, JSX escape. So yeah, mm, what if we just cheat and we kind of, we just push it into the array and then we do set items, items, because then I run a setter, right? Uh, so bad news, it doesn't work. It works exactly the same way because what React also actually does is that it, uh, it checks equality and because it's still the same uh, array instance, so then React sees that, well, we got the same value, nothing to update here. So what we actually need to do is to create a new array. And usually the most convenient way of doing that is to use this uh, React, um, uh, what's it called? Well, whatever, this syntax where you kind of, with dot, 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 you explode the previous array, and then you can do items dot length as the, next item there also so this kind of creates a new array when the beginning is the same as the original array and then one more item there so now actually when we add items we see that now they show up immediately because now we pass something new to set items and everything is fine next thing we want to do we maybe don't just don't want to stringify this but we actually want to show it as a list so let's create a ul here and inside that um, we do, and this is the same as, for instance, with lit also. So we can do items, we can map over them. Uh, and 
then we get an item and for each of the items we uh, and here the cool thing is we can just return jsx here also so we return an element here and we give it the item value as the content and when i save we it kind of works but there were some errors bouncing around there so what it says is each child must have a unique key prop uh, the reason for this is that i mean every time we run this function it returns this whole structure of this element inside this element inside this element and so on and then behind the scenes react is comparing the previous one to the next one to see what should it actually update in the actual dom because dom updates are slow so so react is is optimizing that and if i for instance just change the text in a button or something like that then react can very easily see that oh it's the first button inside the div and and update that but then when we got a list of lots of items then react needs a little bit help to kind of do those updates efficiently because if i would insert something in the list then it would be more efficient to create a new li element in the middle and send the text of that and leave the others be instead of updating the text in all the subsequent ones of course it's not needed here when i just append things but react is still complaining about it so what i need to do is to also for each item here i need to give it a key this should typically be some kind of unique id like if you iterate over business objects then use some uh, database id or something but here just put the item key there again to to make react happy and and now as i click or whatever i do we don't get any errors anymore what we quite often want to do is to extract parts of our view into something else so i mean the most obvious thing is let's just create a new function it returns some jsx and it's used here and i mean this is equivalent to what we had uh, but we can do more than that because we can actually use this as a separate component so let's just name it as such and then i can show it as a react component here except well now i need to pass items there also so let's pass items except this is not the way you pass items to to or properties to a react component because all of them should be in one object uh, that then has items as a property and the name of that is conventionally props so this is actually how we do it now we get one props object containing among other things items and then we need to actually pull the item or kind of use the right variable name there also so well i mean this works exactly the same you won't notice any difference what we quite quite often want to do is that this props object is not really useful for anything so we can use again some new ish javascript syntax to say that let's just straight pull out local variables out out of this object with this syntax so in this way it's, it's a little bit a little bit more concise and it does exactly the same thing the last time I, a thing i want to show here is that of course we can make these optional also so if i just don't pass items here then list says uh, that uh, nope this is wrong because we need to pass on items so what i can do is i can actually tell typescript that well items is optional <laughs> then we get a new error because now it says that this might be undefined what I can do then is I can actually give it a default value. So now, actually, if we don't pass anything, then it uses this default. If we actually pass items there, then it uses those item values. So that was using state. Next up, another kind of directive, because I mean, use state is very useful uh, in a way kind of because everything we do here is a function uh, and these are supposed to be so to say pure functions you can call them again and again and again and if nothing has changed then it should do exactly the same thing return the same things not change any global things or anything like that but that's not very practical and that's why react is providing these kind of escape hatches out of a pure function so one of them is use state where you actually can state some save some value that is preserved between uh, from one invocation to the other another thing you might want to do is uh, use something called use effect so this is for doing side effects something that that kind of 
isn't just returning values or updating states, but it can do whatever. And the way we use that is that we we give it a callback, which is the actual side effect that can do whatever we want. Uh, in this case, just do console log. Actually, let's. Uh, I forgot one thing. Uh, let's go back to this list function again, uh, because we got one maybe an issue here, which is if I here also log when we render the list, then we will see. Let's clear this that. When I add an item, yeah, we render the list, but also whenever I just update the click count, then it also renders the list because, well, React is taking taking the safe route here because like we saw, maybe these items is just the same array object that is updated again, or kind of the content, it, content is updated or something like that. So what we can do is uh, let's create a new component and then we instruct React to wrap this component into a component that is memoized, which means that kind of it it isn't re-rendered if it gets the same props. You can also give it a callback to say which props or how to compare the last props and the and the new ones. But by default, it it, it does some sensible thing. So now when we use that component instead, uh, we will see that now when I add items, it's actually updated. Both parts are rendered because uh, this thing is also kind of this is where the state is defined but if i just click this button then it just renders the top level component but it doesn't now thanks to this memo it doesn't update the or re-render this list now back to the effect uh, so uh, let's here just log kind of that we are in the start of this effect and what we see is well not so much we see that start effect is logged and then when i do something that does a re-render it happens again and again and again so that's not very useful yet the point though is you can give these effects you can declare what are the dependencies and right now i said that this effect doesn't have any dependencies and also i will return a value here so i will return a callback that also logs end effect like this because now what we see is, uh, let's actually restart this. So first it said start effect. And now even if I make changes, nothing happens. If I, for instance, navigate to a different view, then nothing happened. Oh, I need to return. Let's go back. Uh, I click, yes, start effect was run, but no end effect yet. When I navigate to a different view, for instance, then end effect is called. So basically, comparing this to kind of what we have in Flow, this is an attached listener, and this is the detached listener for this component. Now, when I use kind of an empty array of dependencies. What you do in, in these effects is typically, again, something with a side effect, something that shouldn't be run all the time. Uh, a very simple example is to just uh, do something with a delay. So for instance, let's set the I, no, not set, count to count plus one uh, plus actually let's do 10 so we see the effect and let's put a two second delay here so now when i save this you see that uh two seconds after after our refresh then it actually uh updates there's one bug here though because if i refresh i click a couple of times i wait then it didn't increment by 10 it incremented by seven. The reason for that is that this timeout was, or this callback was scheduled when count was zero. So this was actually captured in the in the closure. So what I can do here is that I use uh, a variation of the set count. I pass a callback instead. So now this callback is run with the value at that moment. So now if I click and then when it actually updates on the timer, then it it gets one in this case, and then it it increments that by 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 ten to to get what we expect. Let's have a look now at these uh, dependencies because quite often you have no dependencies, but you might also have. Uh, let's do a silly example here. So if it put items as the dependencies of this effect, then what we'll see is well initially the effect is started and 
two seconds later it updates the count. If I do something here, nothing happens. When items changes, then it ends the effect, starts a new one, and then two seconds later the counter updates again. So we can do a couple of these and we see now it updates and now it updates again. Uh, of course, this is not very useful in this way, just to illustrate the point. You can also do some uh, stupid things like put as a dependency the thing that you're actually changing. So now we see every two seconds this count increases again and again and again and again because every time we run set count we actually invalidate uh, this thing. So let's change that back. Actually let's just disable this whole thing because it will annoy in the final step I'm going to show. The last thing you can do is, oh well, you can do lots of things. The last thing I'm going to show is you can create composite effects or uh, effects hooks also. So let's, for instance, create, uh, we got uh, a hello world service, which gives us a greeting back. So we want to call that in a good way. So let's create actually a function that we call use greeting, for instance. And what we want to do here is we want to have a state. So a const state and set state and that's to state and let's put an empty string there and then we want to return the state and then we want to use an effect also so this is where the magic happens and this effect again has no dependencies so here we want to do um, hello world service dot say hello just given an empty value here and then we want to kind of, when we get a result from here, then we update the state. Uh, I would want to do a wait here, but I can't because this needs to be an assigned function. So let's make this a sync, except I can't do that either because like we remember, this callback needs to return an uh, unregistered callback if it returns anything. But if this now is a sync, then it returns a promise and that's no good. So we actually need to go one step back and use the promise as is so we do a then which gets a callback that is run when the value is, is received so there we can just do set state in this case so now we have a composite hook convention is to always name them use so that people realize that they should be careful with the ordering them and so on so now we can do greeting equals use greeting and then let's show that value somewhere like here for instance greeting like so and now actually i forgot one thing we should here also do uh, set state loading so that we see first the value is loading and then once it's loaded this hook updates or the, the, this set state is run which causes render to run again which then returns a different value because well we don't run this again because the dependencies haven't changed but we we actually return an updated value here that's all the things i had in mind to show you or at least all the things i had time to show you so if we look through what we have we started with looking at jss jsx syntax which is a way of doing react.create element but not so ugly then we looked at using state and updating state with uh, with more complex structure. We looked at extracting this to a component. We give properties, props to that component, like in this case, the items. We memorize the component so that it doesn't re-render if its properties hasn't changed. And then finally, we did some side effects. One just to set a timeout, we saw how you do dependencies on those and then finally we did, did a composite hook which uh, lets us then combine things and the point here is that I mean we can do multiple greetings here also let's show that really quick also so let's put another greeting there also and then now we got two different things because the whole point of this composition is that these are made uh, reusable that's all I had on my mind for today. I managed to time this perfectly. I see there are no new questions in the chat. So thank you. Have a great day.